I'm Rick Bragg, and my book is The Speckled Beauty. What is it about this dog that made him the foundation of this book? I found him on a ridge line in our place north of Jacksonville, Alabama, and uh, he was starved and he was torn to pieces. He had been astray. Someone just threw him away. And he's a beautiful, merle-coated Australian Shepherd. Yeah. Pat Conroy and Willie Morris had both told me that eventually you're going to want to do a dog book because you'll get old and you'll think, hey, it's hard to do anything else. I'll write about my dog. And, and so I wanted to do a softer, okay. kinder book. And I'll tell you when I decided to do it was um, because I took him in didn't mean he was happy there. He was a stray and he was the alpha in the pack of dogs and he was not tame. But when I brought him home, he, he was okay for a while. Oh, well, and that's a lie, he fought everything. Yeah. He fought everything from the mule to the other dogs, to, he just fought. And then one day he just left and he, he, he just left and came back a, a few days later and he was again torn to pieces again. Mm. He was torn to pieces when I got him, when I found him, and then he was torn to pieces again. And I, I told my mom, she's 85 now, I told her, I said, you know, you, you stay here with him. I'm going to run in, call the vet, tell him we're on our way. And I came back out and she was talking to him. And she never liked that dog. She was talking to him like he was a child. And, and she was saying, I'll never forget this. You don't have a name yet. He didn't have a name yet. You don't have a name yet. I think we're going to name you after our third cousin. She had these freckles all over. It had a million freckles. And my daddy, my, my grandfather, her daddy, uh, nicknamed her the Speckled Beauty. And, and she looked right at the dog and she said, so, so because you've got freckles, I think that's what we're going to name you. I could see the, the, the title on the book jacket, The Speckled Beauty, yeah. which I think is the, one of the three or four best book titles he said modestly that he'd <laughs> ever heard. I mean, thank God for mothers. Yeah. I mean, that just that. The Speckled Beauty. The speckled Beauty. Thanks, Mom. What is it about dogs? <laughs> what, they can't talk. They don't feed us. They don't pay our bills. But we'd do anything for them. I think that might be it. I think the fact that, you know, we don't want anything from them, really. I mean, you know, we want something from everybody. We don't want anything from them. I, I know a, a wonderful person who um, loves birds. And I asked her once, I said, uh, what is it? And she said, well, you know, they, they don't ask anything from you. They, you know, they're just there. And I think that's what dogs are. You, you, you read things into them. I mean, everybody gets to read their own narrative into their dog. And what's the dog going to do? I mean, right. the dog going to say, no, that ain't it. You know, <laughs> no, you, got, you read me all wrong. They project their own feelings. And no matter what they project into the dog, and I don't want this to sound highfalutin because mm. I am not that smart. <laughs> but whatever they project into the dog, what they pull out, it's happiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, a, it's just if, if that is not magic, then I don't know what is. So I have a terrible dog, and he steals things, he sleeps in our bed, and I think the worse he acts, the more we like him. Yeah. And I don't know what that says about us as people, or but you've written a book about a, a dog kind of like that. It took me a long time to figure out what was going on. Yeah. At first, I thought he was just slightly, uh, had, had suffered some kind of terrible injury yeah. to his head <laughs> because he was, he would gnaw on dead deer carcasses. But he would drag them up to the front door so we would all get to enjoy it. Right. And, right. and you know, he, 
he watered my mama's flowers in very inappropriate ways. <laughs> That's a pretty good public <laughs> broadcasting way to it say is, that. It is. It's and, uh, nice job. He fought everybody. I'll never forget going to a book event and a, a, a car and driver uh, came to pick me up at the farm to take me to Atlanta to the to the airport and and the dog just attacked the the limousine I mean just gnawing and scratching and here's this immaculate lacquered finish course, and the dog right. is just nice and 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 the the driver just looked at on in fear and and I said, that, you know, you just stay in there. Don't get out. I said, I don't think he'd hurt you, but he would sure mess up your suit. Can you imagine and, the, what the driver thought? He thought, where am I? Well, first of all, he came from Atlanta and drove down roads that you can barely, you know, get, you know, get a tractor down. Right. And then he, but as we were pulling away and the dog running full tilt, because the dog hated to see me go. Dog, dog loved me. Because he's a bad dog and a terrible dog, and an awful dog doesn't mean that he didn't love me. That's right. And, and the dog's running alongside, just that look on his face, like, I ain't never going to see you again. Yeah. And the dog's running, and the guy looks at me and said, does he bite? <laughs> I said, he even bites me. <laughs> and um, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it, but people, you know, people want to, 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 to make their dogs myths. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, there really is a dog, and I, I think my dog is like that, who is perfect in their mythology. You've written about your mother, you've written about your brother, you've written about your family, your, your ancestors. This is a key member of your family, this dog. It is not the book that, um, that we wanted to do. No big spoiler here, but I didn't want it to be uh, a book where the dog dies. And, and I was not gonna do it if the dog died. Just wasn't gonna do it. Mm. I'd write something else. Mm. You know, might have to, you know, forego the payments on my Learjet, <laughs> but you know, I was not gonna. Not gonna do it. I was not gonna do it. But then, you know, after trying so hard to do a book that would be happy, you know, throughout, mm -hmm. um, you know, my brother Sam, uh, who was in every book I ever wrote right. and every story I ever told, um, he got sick with cancer and he passed away. Mm -hmm. So it became a much more human book. And it just shows how life will do you if you concentrate too much on one thing and try to hold on to one thing. You know, sometimes life sneaks in and gets you from the direction you're not looking. Is there a book that changed your life? I think that, that, that what happened to me was I grew up in a house, and this is not an exaggeration. We had the New Testament, and the seed catalog, and that's not a cliche. <laughs> you know, we had a seed catalog in the New Testament, and, and we would get boxes of like Birmingham News and Atlanta Journal Constitutions, mm -hmm. and, and I would read them um, that were, you know, sent down to us from relatives when they were done with them. So I'd be reading about Christmas sales at Macy's in July, mm. you know. But I, I, so that's how I, I, I learned to love to read. But I grew up the knee of the best front porch storytellers on the planet. There are no better talkers than the people of the foothills of the Appalachians. There just aren't. And um, the first time I saw a, a writer capture that, that spirit and color was in a book by Fred Gilpin called Savage Sam. And he wrote Old Yeller. And, but, but see, Old Yeller was tragic and awful and brooding. But Savage Sam was bloody and fast-paced and 
you know, it had Comanches, you know, raiding the farms of the Texas Hill Country. And, and, and I saw in those pages that you could tell a story in print the same way that my people told them, just talking. The best book I, I think I ever read was uh, Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove, okay. in which won the Pulitzer. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, as a grown-up man, I, I saw in those stories something that I did not think humanly possible that you could vanish into mm -hmm. a book. Mm -hmm. When it came out, I read it two or three times in a row. What read it once because it was just such a great story. Yeah. And then I read it because it was for the craft of it, you know, for the craft of it. Right. And then I read it again because uh, I was broke, didn't have anything else to do. And that's a good way to spend the time. This has been a highlight of my life. Oh, it's fun. Thank it's you. It's easy. Thank you for taking the time and doing this, Rick. No, this was, you know, talking about words, you know, talking about writing, talking about books. That's one of the great luxuries in my life. Yeah, and you're a luxury in our lives, so thank you for doing this. No, it's my pleasure. Thank y'all. And thank you for watching A Word on Words. I'm Jeremy Finley, and remember, keep reading. He gets a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Now, he doesn't get one every day, but he gets one often. Until the world runs out of bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits, me and him are going to be like You're this. You're going to be fine. <laughs>